Hi, welcome back. So last time we were talking about filling down with formulas, we looked at how we can use um, sheets to fill down a pattern of numbers that we enter, or we can use it to fill down a formula. In this case, it's using 2 times a4, which is this one. And then on the next one, it recognizes that the next row wants to use a5, so it will kind of fill down in that sense. That was super useful, but there are times where we're doing things like y equals mx plus b, where m and b are going to be the same every time, but we don't want to have to enter them in by hand. We may want to be able to change them later on and see what the results are. So there's another useful feature called fixing a cell um, within a formula that I'm going to teach you in this one. So we're going to start off by entering 0 through 10 in our x column. So I'm going to type in 0, then 1, highlight that, and drag down and get to 10 in this case. And we're going to enter a value of, let's say, m over here as uh, 2. And let's say our y-intercept is f uh, 5 in this case. So if I'm saying y equals mx plus b, you might think you type in equals, and then you say m. So I select the m value. And then I say times. And then I select the x value. And then I say plus and then I select the B value. And that works great for right now. So we get 0 times 2 is 0, plus 5 gives us 5. And you can see even if I change this to 3, it updates and quickly does that. Seems to work fine, but if I go ahead and try and fill down this formula, what we notice is that it quickly breaks. So let's go in and see why. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first cell where it appears to be doing something funky. And what I'm going to do is double click so I can see what's being edited. And I can see that what it's doing is multiplying my value right here by this value over here, and then adding this final value in this cell. But those cells are blank, so that's where the issue is. So it's really multiplying my x value times 0 plus 0, which is why it comes out to 0 for each of these. I can double click on this one and see it's doing the same thing. And here, Excel is trying, or sorry, Sheets is trying to be smart and changing the row each time, but really you want it to stay the same. So one solution could be that I go ahead and fill down two in all of these, but that's a little annoying and you don't always want to have to do that. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. And instead, I'm going to teach you how to fix a cell within a formula. So to fix a cell within a formula, you're actually going to be using the dollar sign, and that tells it to keep that locked, essentially. So in this case, I actually want to lock the D part of this formula. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of D. And I also want to lock the um, fact that it is row 2. And so I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of 2. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go ahead and lock the E, and I'm going to lock the two as well. So by putting a dollar sign in front of each of those, it tells you which component to lock. So when I hit enter, it works. And when I fill down a couple cells, it will remember that I want to keep this at D and at two, and I want to keep this one at E and at two. If instead, if I just put the dollar sign next to only the E, it would only lock the column. So we can try and see what that does. So if I only lock the column instead of the row, then in this case, it seems to work, but when I fill down a few, we can see that what's happening is the row is changing each time. If instead you locked the row instead of the column, for this scenario, it would actually work because we're filling down, but if you're moving across, it wouldn't work. So it's usually good practice if you want to actually lock a cell, you lock the cell. If you want to lock a column, you lock a column, and if you want to lock a row, you lock the row. So I'm going to go back and use the dollar signs to lock it. I'm going to fill down, and we can see that it fills in all of those values. Super handy, because now if I say, oh, you know you know what? I think the slope is actually going to be 2.1 uh, instead of 2 exactly. It will go ahead and auto-update everything. If I want to change the B value, I can do that as well. And if this data right here is linked to a chart, it will actually update the chart as well. Kind of a cool feature. That's it for this one. Next time we're going to actually get into how to process some raw data for a lab. So that'll be a little bit more hitting the nitty gritty. This was mainly focused on basic skills at this point.